What up, folk? I thought I'd do another episode of uh, Cretan Reads Originals. Another story that I had started and never finished. Actually, in paper form. Pretty thick, actually. No title. This one, I'll give you a background before I start. Uh, I'll probably do two chapters. And then I'll do two chapters later on. And we'll go through all the, the entire thing in episodes until it's done. This particular story here, and I spruced up, put on a uh, Goodwill jacket I got for a fantastic deal of $5. I think it looks lovely. Nice shoulder pads, 90 style, or 80 style, 80 or 90s or both. Uh, the story was about a shithead who dies and the afterlife and not going to heaven or hell, and it's not purgatory, it's kind of earning your way to go forward or get sent back. It's, uh, I think there's an old movie that they did the same kind of thing, but I forgot about that until I started writing it. This is kind of different though, because it's more obscene, and there's, uh, you know, curse words, and just kind of objectionable shit. I'm going to say, probably, I'm going to read from this. Again, wrote this many, many, many years ago, probably decades ago before uh, give peace a chance and everyone's special in their own way and uh, if you get offended easily fuck off now you want to hear a good story or a, what I say is a good story stick around I'll do two chapters now some more chapters later having a beverage it's a beautiful day out Windows are open, so if you hear background noise, sirens or neighbors or shit like that, those aren't sound effects that I added because, as you may well know, I don't edit and I don't add shit and there's no fucking fancy shit. It's just an old fucking asshole doing his thing. Here we go. And I will show you at least do two chapters, maybe three. I can't recall how long they are. They're longer, two. But the first chapter is simply entitled Buenos Dias Shitheads. I'll try not to interject extra shit and just read from the page. Let's give it a shot here. And, begin. and my reading out loud is, is not what it used to be, so I may have to stutter a few times and fuck up. But Here we go. Doesn't say page one, but page one. Buenos Dias Shitheads, chapter one. Whew. Look at this simple motherfucker. I can't believe this is the first pile of cock meat that I had to babysit in order to evolve. I know someday this fucker will be doing the iron bar boogie to the night-night table, but not on my watch. Fuck, it's not that he's without a brain or common sense. No, it's just that he doesn't use either one of them for anything more for anything grander than crossing the street without becoming pavement pie. He was an honor student for shit's sake. Not at all like me. He had a chance to be somebody. Be all that he could be, like the commercials used to say. Fucking idiot. I guess some people born with a silver spoon planted firmly on their tongue lose the love of the flavor. I wouldn't know. I was more of a spork spawn since conception. Pure cubic zirconia. Fool's gold. A fucking human crop circle. Shit, I didn't lose you fine people, did I? I guess introductions are in order. Maybe a little backstory. Right on. Want to hear it? Here it go. My name, as if it... <laughs> My name, as if it really mattered, is Stacy Hatfield. No, I wasn't a fucking woman, and I still don't understand how a couple of fine, upstanding native children of Arkansas could put that kind of pressure on a backwoods boy. Pa tried to equate it to some old Johnny Cash song about a boy with a girl's name growing up hard. Then again, I caught Pa sipping Sterno in the back 40 on more than one occasion. That and I got a feeling that when Mama and Papa, when Mama and Papa Shit. Hold on. 
Okay. That and I got a feeling when Mama and Papa were sitting in a tree, K-I-S-S-I-N-G, they were both acorns from the same branch of the same tree. Understand? I'm just saying, I never heard any stories of how they met because I'm of the influence that they made each other's acquaintance on Grandma's right and left titty. That shit happens when you live in a community so small that everyone can trace their lineage back to the only married couple that settled there. Yep. Anyway, my Christian birth name, or as I've heard some of them niggers say, my government name was Stacy. Shit, man, I tried to find any way I could to make that sound less vaginal. Stace? No, even more feminine. See? That got too fucking confusing. I didn't know if a motherfuckers were saying yes in Espanol or asking me if I could spot the same shit they were looking at. I tried the military approach for a minute and went by Hatfield. That worked up until that son of a bitch Don Hatfield started running his fucking used car commercials around the time I started junior high. Hey Hatfield, I like to drive away on your mom with no money down. Hey Hatfield, what's the APR and a blowjob from your mom? Yeah, haha. Ha. I had to put up with the dumb shit like that until I started to fill out like a walking fucking barrel. The jokes tend to come a lot less frequent when you're bigger than anyone in the entire building, including the staff. During your freshman year of high school, at 16 years of age, I was taller than most men, meaner than a rabid pit bull, and it burst from the cocoon that was Stacy Hatfield. If anyone spoke to me, they did it looking at the floor, and they called me Grizz. For you slower thinkers out there that need a minute to Sudoku out Grizz, that's short for Grizzly. No, not fucking Adams. Grizzly Bear. I had arrived. That's really near the... <laughs> That's really neither here nor there at this point, though. This story isn't solely about me, and I got sidetracked. I'll share that tale with y'all some other day, I promise. Now, this particular story is about a stupid shit, well-to-do, fucking pinky-up, coffee-sipping jack, coffee jack-off that I had to keep out of trouble. Well, I had to keep out of trouble if I ever want to move on to a better place. Fuck, I guess I got some explaining to do. Okay, you might want to get a beverage or several because this might get confusing. Actually, it probably won't, but take it from me. You never know which drink will be your last, so enjoy them all as if they were. I guess having no friends but my studies for my youth wasn't such a bad thing. I was the first one in my family for as long as anyone can remember to graduate high school. My GPA wasn't solid enough, wasn't solid enough for me to get... Shit! Wasn't a solid... God damn! My GPA wasn't solid enough for me for an academic scholarship, and I never thought to use my size to go after an athletic ride. No, I was just another fucker ready to enter the real world without any fucking idea of what I was supposed to do. Graduation night, I decided to go, I decided to cross the county line and go to a bar that I had heard serve minors, and I was mighty thirsty. It was about an hour away. And I slammed the twelve of Natty Lights, my, the twelve of Natty Lights paw gave me as a graduation present every inch of that two lane until my tires kicked up the dust of the titties and beard gentlemen's establishment. I figured since I was a big, big old boy, I wouldn't have any problem if I kept to myself. Worst fucking mistake I ever made. I went inside and sure enough downed a couple of pitchers of lukewarm, watered down beer while watching a fine array of stretch marks and banana tits. I thought to myself that I I thought to myself that I should open a place like that so I could fuck all the strippers. Chuckling, I mumbled towards the men's room. Still chuckling, I bumped into a good old boy exiting the men's room that got it in his head that I was laughing at him. The fuck you laughing at, son? He slurred, clearly as buzz as myself. What? Oh shit, nothing, man. I was just thinking of some stupid shit. Excuse me, my back teeth are floating. I tried to joke. My bladder was screaming and I wasn't looking for any bullshit. Whatever, bitch. Watch where the fuck you're walking. He glared as he stumbled back to, to a table of four equally drunk rednecks. I was momentarily taken aback as I attempted to shake the drunken Charles Bronson out of my mind and enter the men's room. Crazy fuck, I thought as I began to play piss hockey with the neon blue urinal cake that had long since lost its sanitary scent. Man, fuck that. And that's where shit gets fuzzy. 
I know I died that night, but I didn't feel a goddamn thing. There was no tunnel of light. There was no hovering above myself. There was no my life flashed before my eyes. There was nothing but me pissing in a dingy urinal and then me receiving my bullshit instructions. What? You never blacked out? That was chapter one. Now chapter two is, right here on the bottom, they did me with a wiffle ball bat. So, all right, we'll go into chapter two real quick. Chapter two starts as, let me get a little beverage. I got a little tickle in my throat here. I fancied up for you fucking people. Chapter two. They did me with a wiffle ball bat. So, and if you don't know that reference, go fuck yourself right in the mouth and the ear and the asshole armpits and the eye holes. Chapter two, they did me with the, they did me with a wiffle ball bat. So starts as such. Get the fuck up, the voice boomed, shaking me like a pair of fifteens in the backseat of an eye rock. Let's go, slow hand, the voice thundered again. I raised my head with absolutely no idea where the fuck I was. It wasn't the first time by any means, but this time was different. It was usually a bathroom floor or the needle point stinging of my arm being pinned under a slumbering plus size honey. Not this time. As my vision began to slowly return and I focus, or as my vision slow, ah, as my vision began to slowly return and focus, I realized that I was laying, lying, on a cold marble-like floor that extended for as long as the eye could see. It was covered in black and white squares about three foot by three foot in a checkerboard pattern that stretched off into infinity. The sky reminded me of an ocean of lava lamp goop bending and colliding, shifting colors like a bad LSD trip. I pushed myself up off the floor and brushed myself off. The voice returned. Holy shit, fucking Lazarus has arisen. Turn around, fun time. You've got a long way to go and a short time to get there, bandit. The voice taunted as I cautiously turned hands up ready to fight and found myself standing face to face with myself. What the fuck? I semi whispered as my hands and jaw dropped, <coughs> dropped like my balls. So my hands and jaw dropped and my mind began spinning like a happy fag in a bukkake circle. Again, folks, I wrote this a long time ago before all this was taboo. Stick with me. You give Tarantino a pass, give me a pass. I'll pick it back right from there. What the fuck? I semi-whispered as my hands and jaw dropped and my mind began spinning like a happy fag in a bukkake circle. Eloquent as always, he, I, fucking it, scoffed as it began to approach me. Whoa, 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 whoa. Hold up, chief. Just hold on a goddamn minute. What the fuck are you and why the fuck do you look like me? I blurted out, stumbling backwards. That's funny. You people are usually more concerned with where you are than who I am. But then again, I'm usually not a mirror image of the asshole I'm here to help, it said. Fuck, where am I? Later for that shit. I want to know why you're wearing my face. Oh, God, no. I screamed, reaching up to make sure that it was, in fact, not wearing my face. What the hell are you doing? It asked. I saw Texas Chainsaw Massacre 2. They stole fucking LG's face, and then he woke up. I never heard about you organ har- I've, I've heard- I've heard about you organ harvesting fuckers. Y'all didn't pull a face off on me, did you? Speak, motherfucker! I shouted as I started to get a little pissed off at the possibility I wasn't the- Handsome son bitch I had grown to love. Settle down, Bo Cephas. No one took your fucking face. I look like you. Or, no. No. Back it up. Settle down, Bo Cephas. No one took your fucking face. I look like this because of you. Fuck, I talk like this because of you. Everything about me is because of you. Now, if you would be so kind as to shut the fuck up, I'll bring you up to speed. Yes, I nodded, still touching my face. Go on, then. 
Good, I appreciate it. Look, first things first, you're dead. You've been dead approximately five days now. You don't believe me? Just take a look around. Where else besides a shitty 70s painting have you seen a landscape like this? Now, anyway... Wait! Fuck! Wait! What do you mean I'm dead? That's bullshit. Someone slipped something into my dream, right? This is just a wacky fucking dream. I'll probably wake up in a pool of piss and some on some fat bitch's bathroom floor anytime now. That's all this is. I balked. Okay, fine. I guess we can sit here a week or two until you accept the fact that this is happening and I'm all you've got now. Let me, uh, let me know when you're ready to let me continue with my little introduction to Death 101 spiel. I can wait. We've got eternity. Shit, I sighed because I knew in my heart I wouldn't lie to myself. I wouldn't lie to me even if I wasn't me. I'm listening. Go ahead. All right, here we go. First off, like I said, I look like you because of a little thing I've come to call the Ghostbuster Factor. I don't know exactly why this occurs, but seconds before I'm summoned to a new recruit's awakening, my physical appearance takes on the characteristics of whatever the freshly departed's fondest memory was. I guess it's easy to... I guess it's to ease the transition. I don't know. Anyway, it's pretty much the same way that Dan Aykroyd chose the Stay Puft Marshmallow Man in, wait for it, Ghostbusters. In your case, the one thing that you abundantly... The one thing that was... <laughs> hold on. In your case, the one thing that was abundantly clear... You love yourself more than anything else in the world. Fuck, let me try it again. In your case, the one thing that was abundantly clear that you love more than anything else in the world is you. What an asshole. Hence and therefore, I look like you. I talk like you. And for some reason, I have a strong compulsion to drink shitty beer and fuck drunk fat women in the bed of a shipbox pickup truck. God damn, you suck. Hey, watch your fucking no. You watch your fucking mouth. I'm flying this fucking plane, so sit the fuck down and shut the fuck up until I tell you it's okay to walk outside the cabin. Capiche? Now I figure you probably now I figure you probably like to know how you met your demise. That's a popular question from the non-suicides. You're going to love this, you drunken fuck. You died due to your own drunken stupidity. Check this out. It chuckled as it waved its hand in the air, causing a bootleg drive-in style screen to appear out of nowhere. The crackle of an old the crackle of an old school projector began to whir, whir as the screen beeped out the black and white. Three, two, one. Let's all go to the lobby. Began to play as it looked over at me smiling. I'm just pulling your chain. Seriously though, you're gonna love this. Give me a second. That's outside, that's the ice cream truck. Let's just give it a second to pass. Okay, back to this. <laughs> I mocked as I sat on the ground and stared at the screen. The movie started with me swaying in front of the urinal in the titties and beard. You could clearly see my pupils. You could clearly you could clearly see by my pupils that the lights were out or the lights were on, but everyone in the fucking house was wasted. Don't worry, the camera adds about 20 pounds, fat ass. It sneered. I turned my attention... Will you shut the fuck up, please? This is kind of important to me. I turned my attention back to the screen and watched myself stumble out of the bathroom. All I had to do was keep my fucking mouth closed and leave the bar. Worst case scenario, 
would have been a DUI and a free meal in the county. Not me, though. Not Mr. Get Bad. I had to look over my good old boy, or I had to look over at the good old boy and his friends and voice my opinion. In my mind, I'm sure I had an intricate argument as to why I was upset that I wasn't showing the appropriate amount of respect as I entered the, the lavatory. Unfortunately, my mind didn't let my mouth know that it didn't have carte blanche to lead the troops into battle without an exit plan. Hey, you! I shouted at the redneck roundup. It would have been nice if they hadn't if they hadn't acknowledged my existence, that would have been great. Nope. It was one of those rare moments when the music stopped, and for some reason, in a fucking bar full of me in a fucking bar full of horny Neanderthals, you could have heard a flea fart. Not only did my intended target turn around, but the entire room full of drunken mountain folk had my full attention. This was hard to watch. Thank God for blackouts. Something in my primordial mind my basic instinct to survive kicked in, and I turned around looking for the asshole that I was yelling, or turned around looking for the asshole that was yelling with everyone else. You don't play it off. Some people bought it. Most of them didn't give a shit and went back to drinking and ogling titties, but the fucker I was yelling at didn't take his eyes off me once, I, once as I staggered out to the door to leave. I braced myself against the door, turned slightly, and in one last act of bravado, raised my middle finger, mouth, fuck you, and exited the bar. I was the kind of asshole that always had to get the last word in. Not my greatest quality. The camera picked up the action outside as I fought the gravity of the 2% grade of the parking lot slant all the way back to my truck. I was cursing incoherently, surely about the fucker that had gotten my blood up, as I slammed into the truck bed just behind the driver's side door. Fucker, mumbling. My dick, further mumbling. Ain't shit. I dropped my keys after several attempts to insert them into the unlocked door. Fuck, I slurred as I bashed my head on the truck door, bending over to retrieve my keys. I picked up my keys, somehow got the fuckers in the keyhole, <coughs> and pulled the door open. My house! I shouted into the night as I climbed into the as I climbed into the truck cab and fell over smooth out across the front seat. So what? <coughs> so what? I died of alcohol poisoning? I didn't fucking drink that much. Looks like I'm still breathing to me. What the fuck, I scoffed. What did you say? Shut the fuck up. This is important. Something like that. Just watch. The camera now pans to the entrance of the titties and beer, and we see the jack-off five come lazily strolling out into the parking lot. They go through the drunken ritual of handshakes, fist bumps, hug it outs, and all that dumb shit that redneck white America do after a night of drinking. Three of the fuckers stumble off and pile into an old shitbox pinto. The car sputters to life and drives away. The asshole that had a problem with me pulls out a flask, takes a draw, offers it to his friend. He accepts and takes an equally long draw. It's fairly clear that they have forgotten about my drunk ass until his eagle-eyed dickhole friend happens to see my leg dangling from my semi-closed truck door. Thank God for 2020 vision. I just had to park under a lamppost. Hey, Jimmy, man, is that that punk-ass kid from the shitter, the one that flipped you off? Why, Lester, I believe it is, Jimmy replied, nodding his, nodding his rubber neck. Want to teach that little shit a lesson? He smirked, exposing his mouth full of tooth nubs. What you got in mind, son? Lester giggled as he threw his arm around Jimbo's neck. That's an awfully nice truck for a snot-nosed bitch to be driving. Let's borrow it. That's what I'm talking about. I'll follow you. Drive, drive and ditch, right? Lester asked as he started to scoot off towards his beat down Ford Thunderbird. You know this, man. Hurry the fuck up. Jimmy joked as he pushed my big ass over onto the passenger seat of my fucking truck. God damn it. That's some fucking bullshit. You don't fuck with another man's ride. 
I yelled as I watched a jankety ass carjacking unfold. Sucks, huh? But wait, there's more. It snickered as the story continued to unfold. Jimmy sped away in my truck with my comatose ass drooling over the passenger window. Or drooling down the passenger window. Lester followed close behind. Stand by your man. Jimmy belched out as he enjoyed my stereo. Fucking prick. He and Lester drove down the kind of back roads that you wouldn't know were there unless you knew they were there. This wasn't their first rodeo. Give him two arms to cling to. Jimmy continued as he took another slug from my flask. Or his flask. I'm sorry. Another slug from his flask. I couldn't believe I was abducted by the president of Tammy fucking Wynette's fan club. I don't even like that fucking song. We skidded to a stop on top of an, on top of an exceptionally steep roadside drop-off. Jimmy and Lester killed the headlights, damn near synchronized. They both stepped out into the night and Lester handed Jimmy a bud from the cooler he had sitting <coughs> on the back seat of his Ford. <coughs> With that, <coughs> let me <coughs> take a swig and clear my throat. We're almost done with chapter two. <clears throat> Lester just handed Jimmy a bud from the cooler sitting on the back side of his floor. We pick up here. They're not about to fuck me, are they? We can skip. <clears throat> They're not about to fuck me, are they? We can skip that if that's on the menu. I ain't trying to watch no Marcelo Wallace shit. I sighed, shaking my head as I awaited the front, or as I awaited the old front door, back door on the screen. You don't get fucked per se, not literally anyway. Figuratively, you're about to get gang raped by John Holmes and Long Dong Silver. This is well, this is just great. Watch. It sneered as I waited to see myself getting teabagged by a fucking dirt farmer. And we'll just scrap this fucker out for parts, I heard Jimmy say as I returned my attention to the screen. Well, what about Johnny Jump up here? Lester asked as he opened the door and I was snoring on, dumping me on the ground. Fuck him. Let's pitch him. Jimmy said as he motioned for Lester to grab my feet. The two men hoisted me from the ground and did the old swinging one, two, three, throw with my unconscious ass over the side of a drop off. I hit the ground hard, bouncing and skidding through the dead leaves and fallen branches of those beautiful trees that you see in the Ozark landscape postcards. At least I got to spend the last moments of my life flipping around like a fucking rag doll in the most amazing scenery anyone could ever hope to see. Amazingly, the fall didn't kill me. I was a bull of a man. No, I could have probably survived the fall and someday exacted my revenge on those fuckers. Unfortunately, in the last couple inches of my bottom of the hill slide to a stop, my face came to rest in a cool mountain creek. I would say by the close-up of my fantastic biopic, I fucking drowned in about two inches of water. Yes, you heard me. I fucking drowned. Seriously, I turned toward it with a look of disgust on my face. In a fucking puddle? Well, if it helps... That stream quenches the thirst of the critters that have been snacking on your ass like a dipshit buffet for the last week. Circle of life and all that bullshit. It laughed as he waved the screen away in an unimpressive poof. At least your truck lives on, big homie. If it's any consolation, Jimmy and Lester will have to go through this shit later on down the road. That's something, isn't it? Peachy. I'm doing fucking backflips over here. At least I didn't have to swallow inbreeder spunk. Now what? Now we can begin to get you the fuck out of here. It said as it waved his hand and a recliner appeared behind me. It waved his fingers at me and I fell into the chair. Class is about to begin. And that's the end of chapter two. We'll pick up again with the next one in chapter three. Just the facts, ma'am. F-A-Q-S. 
Just the facts, man. I hope you enjoyed chapters one and two with all my stuttering and gas and shitty uh, reading skills. I haven't read out loud since high school, and that was back actually literally, literally a century ago. I'm just going to save that right there. Just the facts, ma'am. Day or two. Well, I'm off for like a long week, and I might jump back in tomorrow or the day after or the day after that. If enough of you view this and say, hey, what the fuck? Continue the story. Again, not asking for your likes, not asking for your comments, not asking for your subscriptions. But if I see movement, I'll move too. If I see no one gives a shit, I'll still do it later on, but it won't be as frequent And tomorrow. End of this beer. Gonna go enjoy the rest of this uh, delightful day. Uh, taking a long weekend. Looking sharp. I look like a bougie ass fucking uh, college history fucking professor. God damn, I do. Jesus Christ, I look like some kind of existential fucking philosophy teacher. He's got a t-shirt under, he's got the jacket on the outside, he's he's relaxed, but he's professional. He's got the silly little fucking goatee. He's got the... God damn, I could easily slip into being a supreme douchebag college motherfucker. I could probably fucking just float into one of those stupid ass protests and be arrested. But I'm not. I'm going to sit here and finish this beer and another beer and probably the third beer and I'm going to have, have some uh, nice hot links with the cheddar inside already. Some jalapeno bacon hot links with the cheddar inside. We're done for tonight. We're done for the night if you're here for the stories. I did have one person say in my last A Cretan Reads Originals, the fun time and baby girl, that I should feed that shit into, into chat GPT and let that keep the story going. I don't know about all that shit. And it wouldn't be me. It'd be, be in my style, but it wouldn't be me. And if it's not from me... It, I mean, I could endorse it, but it wouldn't be the same. Like I, I used to write a lot, I kind of just fell off. Hope you enjoyed this. Pointlessness, it's pointless. I'm gonna go take a big old pee and a poop. As with always, and with love, and with respect, finish this beer. That's my Barry Gordy's Last Dragon uh, Cobra Kai <coughs> Karate Strike Peace Folk I gotta get up again, I'll give you another one Peace Folk